So now uh, we will move ahead with the calculation part. So we have taken some of the scenarios like uh, for we have we will understand about uh, storage tank protection for fixed roof tank uh, design and uh, uh, for floating roof tank too. So these are some design calculations. So we have we have considered some dimensions. Uh, so tank dimensions uh, like we have we are, which we are considering over here is 20 meter will be dia. So these are the calculations for the fixed roof tank or you can say internal floating roof tank. So tank type is take, uh, fixed roof or internal floating roof tank. Product stored is HSD. So flash point which uh, is there is uh, less than 38 degrees Celsius and this product classification comes under class B type of fuel. So these are the design calculations. So uh, actually we are covering both the parts uh, as per OSD 117 we will uh, understand uh, how your uh, designing is done and as per NFP also we will understand it. So the minimum foam application rate uh, is phi, uh, which which is considered for uh, like uh, which uh, like the slides which I have uh, make made you understand earlier. So from that slides, if you find out that notings, you will uh, come to know that the minimum application rate is phi for this type of uh, class of fuel. And as per NFP, it is 4.1. So now second, we have to find the fuel surface area. So you have done nothing but uh, pi by 4 d square. So we have found uh, like 3.1.3.142 uh, into you can say 20 into 20 upon 4. So we get the fuel surface area for both the types. It remains the same as per NFP and as per OSD. And the total flow required, what we are doing over here is we are only calculating, we are multiplying your uh, total surface area with uh, your application rate. So the uh, 314.20 into 5. That is application that we are multiplying over here. So we get the total flow required that is 1571 LPM in case of OSD 117. And same goes with the NFP 11. So 314.20 into application rate. So we get 1283 LPM. This will be the total flow required. So number of discharge devices also. So from the notings, uh, you will come to know that as per OSD 117 clause number 4.4.53. Minimum discharge devices to be used is two. So we are considering two over here. And if you refer NFP 11 clause 5.2.5.2.1, .2 the minimum discharge devices to be used will be one over here. So now we'll find out the num flow per unit discharge device. So what you will do is you have got a total flow required over here. That is 157 LPM. You will divide it by the number of discharge devices. So you will get the flow per unit discharge over here. That is 785.5 LPM. And uh, here it is uh, the number of discharge devices one and uh, your total flow is 1283 LPM. So uh, the, the flow per unit discharge remains the same. So as this is a fixed roof tank or uh, you can say internal floating roof tank. So discharge devices which needs to be used over here is foam chamber with deflector for both the types. So now uh, for select regarding the selection of your device, like now you have selected the device, you, you will require foam chamber with a, de a deflector over here. But for model, you need to select the models from the manufacturer's data sheet. So what you have to uh, do over here is you have to refer the data sheets of the manufacturer and you have to refer to the total flow. Uh, so in this case, uh, like sorry. So this is the flow area. One seven one five seven one LPM is the total flow required, and one two eight three LPM is the total flow required in as per OSG and as per NFP. So from manufacturer data sheet, we have found out that uh, based on the total flow requirement, model C will be, uh, that is inlet eighty NB and outlet one four fifty NB. This uh, model C will be required as per OSG one one seven, and the same goes with NFP. Model C will only be required for uh, uh, for that flow. That is inlet 80 NB and outlet will be 150 NB. So required flow and pressure of the each device discharge devices will be uh, so as per manufacturer standards, your discharge devices to operate from 3 kg to 7 bar, 3 bar to 7 bar. So we are taking the minimum pressure over here to 785 LPM at 3 kg per centimeter square. So you have found out in the earlier side you are uh, uh, like discharge per unit uh, uh, flow per unit discharge. So that only we are uh, considering over here at the minimum inlet pressure that is 3 kg per centimeter square. Same goes over here that is 1 to 8, 3 LPM at 3 kg per centimeter square. So required quantities were 2 and here it was 1. So total flow we have got over here. So now uh, we have we are like we have considered operation time from this clause 4.4.9. So it comes to about 65 minutes. 
and uh, another uh, from uh, NFP 11 uh, referring to the clause number 5.2.5.2.2. .2. So the operation time goes to about 30 minutes. So now we are can, uh, like calculating the total foam concentrate required over here. So what we are doing is we are total flow we have, we have operation time. We are only multiplying uh, total flow with operation time into the percentage. So 3% foam is required to 0 0.03 into 1.1. And why 1.1? 10% we are considering on the higher side. So the, we get the total foam concentrate required. So this is 3369 liters as per OSD 117 and 12752 liters as per NFP 11. So now we have to consider the uh, bladder tank or foam tank capacity with the proportional size. So uh, 3369 liters, we, this is a fo total foam concentrate which, which will be required. So based upon that, we will get the bladder tank capacity. So as per manufacturer standards, uh, 3,500 liters is the standard size, uh, which is for the bladder tank. And same year, 2,752 is not a standard size, but 300 liters is a standard size. So, uh, and the proportional size we have calculated based on the total flow requirement. So it was 1,751 LPM in case of OSD 117 and 1,283 LPM in case of the NFP 11. So here also we are referring the manufacturer's data sheet and we, we are getting the sizes for the uh, you can say ratio controller. So you, like here you can use the two type of devices. One is the bladder tank with your uh, ratio controller, or else you can use foam tank with your inline inductor or ILBP. So here same, uh, we are referring the manufacturer data sheet in case of inline inductor or ILBP, and we uh, we are calculating the, uh, uh, you can say the uh, size for the inline inductor and the size for the ILBP. So this was the calculations for the fixed roof tank. So same we will uh, understand for the floating roof tank. We are considering the same tank that is 20 meter diameter and 14.450 uh, meter height. Tank type will be floating roof tank. Product stored will be HSD. Flash point is same, uh, less than 38 degrees Celsius and product classification is class B type of unit. This is an pictorial image which uh, depicts floating roof tank. So here also uh, we are showing the uh, like uh, design as per uh, uh, OSD 117 and as per NFP 11. So minimum foam application rate, if you refer the tables, which we have understood before, as per OSD 117, it comes to 12. And as per NFP 11, it comes to 12.2. So same uh, will be the process. We will calculate the fuel surface area. So in that, in this case, as we have internal floating roof, uh, this is a floating roof tank. So that there will be a foam dam which needs to be protected over here. So what you have to do, you have to do your external diameter minus your internal diameter. So your foam dam is, uh, as I told, we have to consider of uh, uh, 600 mm, uh, you can say. So 1.2 we are uh, uh, yeah, subtracting from 20 and we are getting 18.8 over here. This is the internal diameter and this is the external diameter. So what we are doing pi by 4 d square minus pi by 4 d square. So we are getting 36.87 meters square over here. So same for NFPA. So there will be no change. Then we have to find a total flow required. So what we will do over here is we will multiply your fuel surface area with the application rate. So uh, we, we get for as per OSD, we get 442.44 LPM. And uh, as per NFPA, we get 449.814 LPM. So next step is the number of discharge devices which will be required. So if you refer OSD 117 clause 4.4.53, so number of discharge devices which will which will uh, we will require will be two. And as per NFPA, if you refer uh, uh, clause 5.3.5.3.1, the discharge devices which will be used will be one, which will required will be one. So now we have to calculate the flow per unit discharge device. So how you, you will calculate it? You will uh, divide your total flow required by the number of discharge devices. So here you get it 222 LPM and here you get it 450 LPM. So the type of discharge devices which are used for your floating roof tank is nothing but foam maker with porer uh, for both as per USD and as per NFPA. So now uh, we need to uh, like select the model for foam maker. So here uh, we have to go like same. Uh, we have to refer the manufacturer's data sheet and based on the total flow requirement, we have to consider the model size. So here we are considering model A, inlet 50 NB and outlet 80 NB. Same goes with NFPA, model B, six, inlet 65 NB and outlet 100 NB. So 
and uh, uh, this is the required fluent pressure at each discharge device. So we have to consider the discharge which is required for the each uh, your foam maker. So it comes to 22 LPM at your minimum pressure that is 3 kg per centimeter square. Same goes over here, 450 LPM at 3 kg per centimeter square. So required quantities were two, required quantities were one. Total flow requirement was 443 LPM. Here it was 450 LPM. So operation time, uh, from if you refer clause number 4.4.9, uh, you will get it 65 minutes as per OSD 117. And if you refer class 5.3.5.3.1, you will get 20 minutes for NFP 11. So we are uh, calculating the total foam concentrate required over here. So what we are doing is which we are multiplying the total flow required with your operation time into your uh, 0.003. This will be your foam concentrate. Uh, yeah, that is three percent and into 1.1. That is your we are considering 10 percent on the higher side. So we are getting 950 liters as per OSD 117 and uh, 297 liters as per NFP 11. So now next step will be we have to calculate the blended tank capacity. So 950 is not the standard size, so 100, 1000 liters capacity is considered. And same here, 297 is not a standard size, that's why 300 liters is considered over here. And 50 MB ratio controller size, same, we have to refer the data sheets of the manufacturer and we have to see the total flow requirement and we have to see where it where it fits in which model it fits so 50 nb model 453 lpm and 50 nb model 450 lpm both are fitting so we have considered 50 nb over here so same you can use bladder tank or you can use foam tank with your inline inductor or ilbp so we are also showing some calculations for inline inductor and ilbp over here same we have to refer the total flow requirement and refer the manufacturer data sheets and find out the a suitable models. So we are getting 65 NB for both ILBP and inner inductor. So this was about the fixed roof tank and the floating roof tank calculations. So now in case of the spill fire, so we need to calculate, uh, understand the design calculations for your dike area protection. So in further slides, we are going to show that like we are going to understand more about uh, dike area protection, how it happens, some design calculations for dike area protection. So we are considering uh, the dike uh, which it, uh, width and length that is 35 meter is the width and uh, 60 meter is the length. So tank like in the tank in that particular dike there are two tanks of diameter 20 meter. Product stored is HSD same. Flash point is less than 38 degrees Celsius and product classification is class B over here. So this is one pictorial image uh, which shows the MEFGs uh, which are protecting a dike. So this is a medium expansion device. So same uh, like uh, we are going to understand both the scenarios over here as per OSD 117 and as per NFP 11. But uh, if you refer the clause number 4.4.7 in case of the OSD 117, uh, there is no need for calculation of uh, ABFGs uh, as per OSD. They have given this note like protection for die care or spill fire for class A tanks. We have we need to use two numbers fixed type MEFGs for each tank tank. And for class B tanks, two numbers, portable foam generators for each tank bank. So there is no need of calculation. We just need to refer this to uh, notings from OSD 117 and accordingly we need to consider them. As per NFPA, uh, clause number 5.7.3.2, the minimum application foam rate comes to 4.1 in case of the spill fire. So dike area, we need to calculate. Uh, we have the dimensions over there, uh, width and length. So uh, length into width, we will do 35 into 60. We get dike area 2100 meter square. So area of the tank. Now dike, the full dike area needs not to be protected. There are also tanks inside the dike area. So what we have to do is we have to subtract the tank area from the dike area. Then we will get the remaining area which needs actually needs to be protected. So here we are finding the area of the tank, which is uh, 20 into 20, that is pi by 4 d square into two times because two tanks are there. So we get it 628.4 meters square. Now we are finding out the actual area to be protected over here. So what we are doing is we are uh, subtracting the dike area minus your area of the tank. So we are getting the actual area to be protected over here. So here also same, this is the actual area to be protected. Now what we will do, we will multiply your actual area to be protected into the application rate. So this will be your total flow required. That is 6031 LPM. And your type of discharge devices that will be used will be medium expansion foam generator for your dike area. So as per NFP 11, number of discharge devices, if you refer this clause number 5.7.3.5.3.2, uh, based upon your uh, 
you can say the tank diameter periphery, the spacing between those, the, the, uh, it should be 24 meter apart. Uh, sorry, uh, for die area, uh, sorry, I got confused. So you, if you refer this clause number 5.7.3.5.2, .5 you will directly get number of discharge devices over there. So it, it is coming to 12. So flow per discharge devices is total flow divided by the number of discharge device, which is 502.5 LPM. If you divide this by 6031 by 12, you will get 502.5 LPM. So selection of MFG now, we don't have this standard size that is 502.5 LPM. So as per manufacturing standards, we have 600 LPM of MFG. So we have selected a 600 LPM over here. And the operation time, if you have a clause number 5.7.3.2, the operation time for a MFG should be 20 minutes. So now what we will do, we will calculate the bladder tank capacity, which will be required for this uh, dike area. So total foam concentrate, which we will require to uh, need to be calculated to calculate the bladder tank capacity. So what we are doing is 7200. We are getting it from this year only. So selection of MEFG, we are selecting 600 LPM of your MEFG into 12. So we will get 7200 over year into operation time, that is 20 into your foam concentrate uh, ratio that is 0 0.03 into 1.1 1 .1. that will be 10 percent on the higher side so you will get 4752 liters of your foam uh, concentrate which will be required for your dike area protection so the bladder tank capacity uh, comes to about 500 liters uh, if we go as per the manufacturing standards and if we uh, like if we uh, see the total flow required in the manufacturing data sheet the proportional size which we get is 150 nb for uh, two which covers your 6031 or 7200 lpm of your flow so uh, this was all about now uh, like fixed foam system uh, in for the uh, floating roof tank or fixed roof tank and the die care protection so these were the primary uh, devices which are and the secondary or tertiary devices which are used for your uh, storage tank protection but water spray system is also been used for a storage tank protection basically for tank cooling so this is just a pictorial view like how your mv nozzles are placed at the periphery and uh, like it is used for the tank pulling so in our future webinars we will cover this calculations for your mv nozzles how your mv nozzles quantity is calculated for uh, uh, tank pulling <laughs>